So the idea behind this tutorial is to plug a LED into the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi and then you'll be able to create a web browser that can turn the LED on and off and you can use any web browser. So it can be your computer, your iPhone, your Android phone, a smartphone, whatever you would like. We're going to create ourselves a very simple HMI screen using Node Red and it's going to be um, controlled 100% through the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to program it through my Mac. So to do that, you need to have a Raspberry Pi that has the uh, SD card already flash the OS already installed and you need to enable SSH. So I already have that done. So now we can go ahead and we can SSH into the Raspberry Pi and you're going to need to know the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. So now that we're inside of the Raspberry Pi, what we can do is we can launch Node Red and you're going to need to install Node Red if it isn't already installed. Um, I'm going to leave a link below this video on all the steps you need to do to complete installing the Raspberry Pi Node Red version. So we'll go ahead and we're going to run that. So it's just Node Red start. And once you have it started, if you're headless like I am right now, you're going to go up to any web browser. I'm using Chrome. You can use the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and go to port 1880. And so now you can see the page where we've got all of our nodes on the left. And then we've got the centerpiece here where you can drag in the nodes and do your programming. And then on the right toolbar, we've got some information, we can debug, and then we can also access the dashboards. The dashboards will be the UI or the user interface that we'll be using to control the LED once we have this project set up. So similar to industrial programming, we're gonna program left to right, and then we're gonna connect the nodes together. So we're gonna start with an input, and then we're gonna trigger some output, and then in the middle, we're gonna do some logic. So our input is gonna be an inject node, and an inject node can be a timestamp, it can be a flow, it can be a global, it could be a string, a number, a boolean, JSON, it could be any of these things. We're going to send it in a string because that's what our um, GPIO is looking for. And we're going to send it a 1 for high or a 0 for low. And now that we've got that, we can go ahead and find ourselves the Raspberry Pi out. And that's GPIO out. We'll go ahead and we'll connect them together. Open up the Raspberry Pi node. We've got our LED plugged into GPIO 17. That's on pin 11. And we're gonna initialize the pin to low. And I think that's just good practice. I would much rather have my program control the LED than to initialize the pin randomly. And so now we know that when this uh, initializes, the pin will be off, okay? You can also go in here at the bottom and give it a name. If you have a lot of devices, this could be really helpful. You can also give your little flow a comment, and I'm just going to do that so that when you're reading this, you know what's going on where. So this is to turn the LED on. And that looks pretty good. So to get this code onto the Raspberry Pi and have it running, you'll go up to this deploy and you'll see that it's successfully deployed. Now remember, this browser, we're looking at it on our laptop, on our Mac, but it's actually running on the Raspberry Pi. And that's signified through this IP address at port 1880. All right, so once we inject this node by clicking here, you'll see that the LED just turned on. Now we need to find a way to turn the LED off. And the easy way to do that is to just copy this and change the logic. So this is going to be for turning the LED off. And instead of sending a 1, we're going to send a 0. And that's going to signify low. Go ahead and we'll deploy that. And you'll see the LED shut off because we have it initialized at 0. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn the LED on. And then we can go ahead and we can inject it and turn the LED off. Pretty cool. Um, and, and it's pretty much real time. Uh, which is a really cool feature if you want to do something home network based, but you don't want to have to program some sort of uh, HTML page or some sort of web app. This is a great way to just prototype something and then get yourself a dashboard and then create your project. 
So now let's go ahead and we're gonna talk about how we're gonna create our actual dashboard. There is a dashboard library for Node-RED and I have that installed. If you just go up to manage palette and then you go to in palette and then install and you search for dashboard. So you're gonna scroll down to the Node-RED dashboard and then click the installed. It'll restart Node-RED and you'll have all of these nodes available to use. We're gonna just do a simple demonstration using the switch and the switch is gonna to toggle, it's just gonna to be a toggle switch, so it'll be a two-state switch, and it's gonna to toggle our LED on and off. So I just copy this down, I'm gonna connect them together. I'm gonna to open up the switch, and when you go inside of the node properties for the switch, you're gonna to need to put it into a group. I already have one created, but you would just go up here and you would create yourself a group, and then a lot of this is just formatting and aesthetics, so depending on how you want it to look, um, you can kind of customize it and add some graphics to it. Now we are going to go down to this when clicked send and the payload has to be in the form of a string and we're going to send it a one for true and then another string we're going to send it a zero for false or off or low and that looks good. So I'm just going to bring this comment down here and this is just going to be the LED dashboard. And now what we can do is go ahead and deploy these nodes. And then to get to the dashboard, you're just gonna go into your menu bar. You're gonna go up to the little chart and you can click the little arrow out. And this address here is actually the user interface. And you'll see that we've got ourselves a switch. And when we click it, it turns the LED on. And when we click it again, it turns the LED off. And so there's a ton of these different widgets that you can use to create HMIs or dashboards that work directly with a ton of different IoT applications. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to check out this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you in your next IoT project. If you did enjoy it, please share it with a friend and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.